Yes, amen. Thank you, Karen and David, for that wonderful entry into this time of worship together. We welcome you to worship here at Christ Church United Methodist in Charleston, West Virginia. It's good to see a, a fair crowd here in the centrum today, and we welcome you that are worshiping with us online. And if you are worshiping online, though, we do invite you to go to our website at uh, w ccumwv.org, uh, where you'll find a copy of our bulletin with all the liturgies and the lyrics for the hymns that we'll be sharing today in our time of worship. We invite you to do that. I'm Pastor Jay. I'm the lead pastor here, and I'm really glad to, to see all you. I wanted to share a couple of brief announcements with you. We are easing our way back into many of our programs. Uh, again, the COVID uh, you know, virus is still uh, kind of raging here among us. I hope we've hit the peak and are on our downward slide, but we'll see. But we do have some of our programs that are starting. Many of our meetings have been done virtually. Those will probably continue to do so a little bit. Uh, but I also wanted to lift up a couple of uh, special programs that are happening. Our young adults are working on getting together. You'll see in the, the, uh, the uh, update that goes with your bulletin, uh, they're going to have an activity this week. It will be done virtually, so you could join with them as they try to rebuild that group. I know our confirmation class is meeting this afternoon, and I see some of those young adults here uh, that will be participating in that, our young people joining in that activity. Uh, we have a children's program now that's moving forward uh, on Wednesday evenings. Uh, it looked like a great time this past week week if you want to be a part of that. And also continue to invite you to join with me in our study of the Bible this year. You'll see the information there in your bulletin of this uh, study method and reading a couple chapters a day. We'll be able to get through the whole Bible uh, during the course of the year and it follows a, a SOAP Bible study method. Some of us are discussing that during the Connections Hour if you want to be a part of that. Or you could just uh, you know, do it yourself and then uh, let us know at some point how you're doing with that. But I pray you will join me as we uh, read our way during this year and allow God's word to form and shape us. We'll be blessed today. Pastor John will be sharing our message with us and I'll be sharing with the kids and doing a few other things in our service. But now, after that wonderful intro musically, let us join our hearts and minds together as we worship God. Good morning. I'm Janet Flanagan, your liturgist for today, and I would ask that you would stand as you are able and at home. Please join us in the call to worship. God has called us to share the good news of God's love. That God should call me. You are a beloved child of God. I don't know where to start. God has called each one of us to serve using the gifts we have been given. 
Make us ready, O Lord, to be true disciples, offering ministries of faith, hope, and love. join in the gathering prayer, let us pray. God of great expectations, help us to understand that the opportunities for service you offer to us also come with your abiding presence, love, and support. It is your love which makes the impossible possible. Let our work be part of the fulfillment of God's good news, God's love for this world. Amen.
Uh, you may be seated, and I'd like to invite the children to come down to join with me in the children's sermon today. I see a few of them back there. Come on down if you'd like, and let's share a little bit together. All right, come on, got your bear and ready to go. All right, I like it. I like it. Hey, Hampton, how you doing? Why don't you, why don't you sit down here just because of the virus, okay? We don't want to be super close because I wouldn't want you to get sick. Come on right there. All right, anybody else coming down? Do we have any more? All right. Well, I tell you what, we, I know Pastor John's behind me, and he has always had this custom with you all to say good morning. So will you join me in saying good morning today like Pastor John does? All right. Ready? And you that joining us online can do that as well. Ready? One, two, three. Good morning. Wow. It is a good morning. It's good to see everybody. But you know, Christmas has just passed, right? Just a few weeks ago. And you know, I went into the store during Christmas and there were, hey, there she comes. There were Christmas trees everywhere and, and wreaths and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, why don't you sit right there? There you go. There you go, good. But anyway, there were Christmas trees and all kinds of stuff. And then I went in a couple days later and I saw these things. Did you start seeing these things in the stores? What is this? Can you tell me? Yeah. Can somebody tell me what this is? What is it? It's a heart. Yes. I started seeing hearts all over the store because they were getting ready for Valentine's Day. But there is no elephant. I just have the heart today. Okay. Let me sit back. Okay. I need it for my thing. All right. But anyway, so there were all kinds of hearts in the stores because they were getting ready for Valentine's Day. And I got to thinking about Valentine's Day and how it celebrates love. And I began to think about this question. What is love? Have you ever thought about that question? About what is love? I don't, probably not. But then some other kids were asked that question, and here were their answers. They said, what does love mean? He says, love is when you go out to eat and give somebody most of your french fries without making them give you any of theirs. I thought that was pretty good. Another little girl, Elaine, said, love is when mommy gives daddy the best piece of chicken. And then another little one said, love is when mommy makes coffee for my daddy and she takes a sip before giving it to him just to make sure it tastes okay. I thought those were pretty good. But I wanted to ask you guys, what is love? What are signs of love? Can you think of anything? What is love? How would you describe it? Hmm? Okay. Well, when, you know, this morning somebody said one way they saw love was hugs. Isn't that a good way to think about what is love is a hug, right? I bet your mom and dad give you a hug, just like you're hugging your little sister, right? Those are good things. The other said, said sometimes love is doing something for somebody, like that other child said about giving dad the best piece of chicken, okay? Love is all of those things, but the thing I wanted you to remember mostly today is that God is love. It's true that that love that we feel for each other comes to us from God. And God gives us God's love and then invites us to go share that same love with other people, right? And so love is a way that we do that. And Pastor John will be talking about that and probably in junior church we'll learn more about that as well. But the one thing I do know about love is that when I encounter love, it makes me smile, right? You see my little thing there? It makes us smile, right? Just like love makes you smile, okay? Let us pray together. Will you pray with me? Loving God... We thank you for your love, the love of our family, and the chance to share love with everyone we meet. Ready? Amen. All right. You all can go back. I know somebody's there to take you to junior church. Looks like Miss Julie's there. Yeah. Yeah, Julie and Amy, I think, will be doing that. Oh, there's Amy. I didn't see her all the way in the back there. They're going to be leading you in junior church. You're welcome to go back to junior church, or you can go with your family, whichever you want to do, okay? He's going to stay with you guys? Okay. There you go. You're good. Everybody needs to go talk to... Huh? Fix that the way it's supposed to be? Yeah, get it back over your ear. There you go. Is that better? Okay, good. Everybody wants to see Pastor John today. As we prepare for our time of prayer today, I'm going to lay on the altar the 
prayer concerns that were lifted up as those of you that came in to join us that are here in the centrum. We also invite you to share your prayer concerns in the, uh, the chat there that are joining us online. And I'm also going to add our little heart here, just because we remember everybody in our hearts as we gather for this time of prayer. So now let us join in our prayer course as we lift our hearts to God in prayer. You want to see Nana? He wants to go see Jeannie. God, it is in you that we see light, it's within you that we feel the fullness of life, and we know that in you is love, for indeed we know that you are love, and that you invite us to share in your love, and to share that same love with others. As we come today, Lord, we recognize there have been times when we have not lived into that high calling. There have been times when we have not been as loving as we should. Times when harsh words came instead of patient words. Times when we did not see our neighbor's need and walked by. For those times when we failed to live into that high calling of love, oh God, we pray your forgiveness. Yet we recognize that you are a God of steadfast love, ever offering that love and forgiveness and inviting us back onto the path. So Lord, be with us today as we seek to place ourselves back in that path of love, a love that we saw demonstrated in your son Jesus and in the way he cared for others. So too do we seek to care for others, lifting up our neighbors who are struggling with illness particularly those in the hospitals or coming home recovering from surgeries. We pray for the many in our nursing care facilities around us, Lord, who due to the recent shutdowns have been unable to see their family. And we pray that you would comfort and strengthen each and every one of them. We pray also for any who have lost loved ones and now walk that valley of sorrow. We pray that your comforting presence would surround them and Sustain them as they walk that difficult journey. Oh God, one of the things we know about your love is it is a love which brings peace. And even this day, we know that there are armies amassing on borders and sabers rattling across the globe. But Lord, we pray that calm minds might prevail. And we pray that your peace might prevail. And that love might rule anew in the hearts of our leaders and in those nations where there is difficulty and strife. 
For we know that when we look to your son Jesus, we see that light of love so clearly. A love that not just loves those close to us, but even our enemies. And so we pray that you would help us to live into this love as we follow his model. And we do so today by sharing in that simple prayer that he has invited us to pray. Saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson is from Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 10. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Good morning. My name is Pastor Don, the Associate Pastor of Family Life here, and it is my joy to share the message this morning. We're going to start off by a reading from the book and letter of 1 Corinthians, Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, continuation of what many of us heard last week. This is from chapter 13, starting with verse 1 and going through verse 13. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. And when I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, but then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these, is love. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We are coming to the end of a sermon series. And so we have been building and building and building, not just to today, but to tomorrow and far beyond. But for some of us, we might have missed a couple pieces along the path. And so I want to just help remind us and bring us to where we are this morning, our launching pad. It's like a, a chain reaction. So why are we here? Well, we started exploring this question. Pastor Jay led us through the first several weeks of this. And the big why of our life changes how we live, how we go about doing everything. What we do is so much more impactful when we know why we are doing it. And so Pastor Jay led us to understand that the origin of our why is in our place as God's children. We are beloved children of God, held and claimed through baptism, empowered by the gift of God's Spirit in us. It fuels us. It energizes us. It equips us. It is the why about how we go about in this world. The gift of the Spirit and our status as children of God. So before anything else, can we all just say, I am a child of God. I am a child of God. The next step on that journey was the thought that the Spirit came and is fueling us, but it's not just giving us power, it's giving us gifts, specific gifts. Each and every person here has been equipped with a spiritual gift. And those gifts are the tools God has given you to join in and join together to make a difference with your love, with your energy and your power and your passion and your compassion. We each have these different gifts and there's about 20 of them found in the Bible. And when you put them all together, you begin to see that we can do more together than apart and that all of our gifts are different and none are more valuable. It's like a building that comes together. Each one is a different board, a different beam, a different material, but it takes all of it to hold together and to provide the shelter. And then finally, last week, we saw what the purpose of us all coming together was. 
And that was to join into the mission of Jesus the Christ. You see, Jesus stood up and read his mission for everyone to hear. To bring good news to this world. For the poor, the imprisoned, for the mistreated. To go forth and declare a year, a time of the Lord's favor. The blessing of God for everyone. And so here we are today. Knowing we are children, given gifts, formed together, and sent out on a mission, joining in what Jesus is doing. But this was a chain reaction, right? Something had to start all of it. Something had to, had to come forward to send us all into motion. And so that's where we are today. What started it, what held it all together, and what propels us and calls us ever onward. And that is the love of God. A love that will not let you go. It is the reason why God so loved creation from the moment of its inception. His, his hand working through the dirt and calling it supremely good. It was his love that called Israel together. It was his love that called the prophets forward to share. It was his love that sent Jesus, his love that, that called the Holy Spirit down. It was his love that gave us gifts, that formed us into a church. It was the same love that asked us to follow him and join in that mission. It was a love that will always be. Romans de declares it is a love that nothing in this world can take from you. There is nothing that can separate you from the love of God. And so for anything else, you are loved. Now, as we move forward, I want to, to tell you a little bit about that first piece of that puzzle was the prophets, right? What I said is that God sent the prophets. Oftentimes, prophets are, are, are bringers of bad news. That's what people hear. They're like, oh no, it's asking me to do all sorts of things. It's hard. There's always ramifications. Oftentimes, there's a lot of destruction and sadness. Jeremiah, the prophet, is no exception. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Jeremiah, and it is the call of Jeremiah. When Jeremiah is a young boy, God comes, and, and he has his vision, and he touches his lips, and he gives him words, and he sends him out. And Jeremiah is terrified, just like our call to worship. Who am I to do this? And God says, you are my child whom I love, and I will be with you. And I will give you what you need to say. And I will show you what you need to see. And you will bring my words to the people. For you see, Jeremiah was chosen to share God's love with God's people. Because Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet. Because what he was telling the people was something that was breaking God's heart. God could see this world and this people that he loved so much, making so many bad decisions. They were running out of rope to hold on to. They were forever like sliding down the rope and they were about to run out and just let go. And the ramifications of their actions and their decisions was going to bring great heartache in their life, in their country, in their world. And so God sent Jeremiah and said, please, please turn back and listen. Please, I love you. Listen to what I want to say. And so Jeremiah is sent to tear and uproot, to destroy and overthrow all those things that are leading the people astray, leading them to make bad decisions that hurt their, their lives, that break apart their families, that shatter their relationship with God. And instead, he's asked to build and to plant those new pathways and byways that will lead people back into life. Why? Because God loved Israel so much, God could not let it go. God loves us so much, God cannot let us go. So what about us today? We today sometimes run short on love. Short in having felt love and short in giving love. We today struggle with the concept of love. When we talk about to just us today, what this message of love, how living love is our response and the culmination to all these gifts, we need to start with that same place, that first 
energy that channeled through the chain reaction, the love of God. And so I want to share with you this passage. If you can go to the next slide. We love because God first loved us. It's a very simple message, but it is the message that carries from Genesis to Revelation. It is the message from the moment God said, let there be light. There has been love that has gone before us. It is what fills us, and it is what we share. You cannot give what you do not have. It's a, it's a simple principle for us to live and understand. I cannot give you something I cannot have. If I, if I don't have it, I can't get it. So how can we love unless we understand that God first loves us? And so, God gives us Jesus. When everything else had failed, when everything else had fallen aside, and we still kept making mistakes, and we still do today, God gave us the clearest manifestation of God's love this world will probably ever know. The living embodiment of love, Jesus the Christ. And, and he came and he shared God's love through this world, right? But he gave us a new commandment. And this is, this is where the meat gets on the bone, so to speak. So if you can go one more slide. A new commandment Jesus gives us. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Love, 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 love. It's everywhere in this message. It's everywhere in this service. But... How many people here have gotten to experience love like those first disciples? Who actually were called from a lake shore to follow a rabbi, a poor man, wandering through the desert, healing and preaching and sharing, performing miracles and walking on water and all this. Who here has felt the love of God, like literally felt the side or the scars on his hands? It's hard, right? This type of love, the love of Jesus, is something we think about. It's something lofty. It's something we share in Scripture. It's something we aspire to. But it's so hard to just hold. It's so hard to know. And so Paul begins to, to share God's love. Because Paul wasn't one of these disciples either. He wasn't one of the people that touched Jesus. In fact, he had been working against Jesus for the first part of his life. And when he experiences God's love in a very profound way, a way that changes him, he knows he has to share it. His cup has been filled, and so he shares it. But he can't share it like Jesus did. And so he tries to share it as only he can. And so he shares with us in the church in Corinth this beautiful passage of what love really is. And in that passage, there's a line. If I don't have love, I am nothing. You see, Paul tries to take the living love of God and, and, and articulate it, to share it with people that he may not get to meet. It's a noble endeavor, right? Because love is abstract, but it's also very concrete when you feel it. And so he gives you a litany of all these things that the world aspires to. These great gifts, these wonderful things. If I give away everything and have not love, I am nothing. If I can move mountains and have not love, I am nothing. If I can know everything, speak everything, share everything, but don't do it from a place of love, it is nothing but noise. Love is what holds it all together. You see... When we talk about this passage, we are challenged to love as Jesus loved and given examples of what that love looks like. It's patient, it's kind, it bears, it endures. It is not, it does not love bad things, it loves the truth. It does not hide, it is shared. It's not something you hold only to yourself, but give freely. Love is an action. An action that God gives us and we give to the world. And so we come to love that holds it all together. How do you know that you are loved? This is a very simple question. How, literally, how do you, Ned, know that you are loved? How do you, Helen, know that you are loved? How do you, Leah, know that you are loved? How do you, Peggy, 
we have stories, right? We have moments in our life when we know we are loved. As Pastor Jay shared this morning, a little boy sat right there and said, love is a hug. Because how he knew he was loved is when his mom and his dad wrapped him up in their arms and just held him. It was something that he knew and he could share. And that is the type of love we are asked to share. You see, God came as love to share it. He was a living love walking this earth, sharing through healing, through caring, through listening, through crying, through helping people stand up and helping people lay down. He was present in the best of times and the worst of times. When the whole world was thunderclouds and lightning and the waves were rolling to the time where he would lift up bread and break it to feed a hungry crowd. Jesus was present and his love was shared and shown not just with words, not just with gifts, but with everything he did. All that he was, all that we are called to be with our the Holy Spirit, our gifts, our church, and our mission. We are all held together by that same love. But who here has never felt loved? Or questioned that they were loved in their life? It occurred to me the very first time, maybe some of my confirmands can back me up on this, when I was, when I was um, about 12 years old and I encountered a whole bunch of people that began to bully me, and I realized there were probably a lot more people that I was interacting with that didn't love me than that did. And suddenly I began to question, am I lovable? Everyone else had loved me my whole life, my family, my friends, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins. But suddenly there was a whole group of people that did not show love to me at all. And I began to question. And then I began to listen. As the world got bigger and bigger, as I grew up, and the crowds got larger and larger, and the commercials got louder and louder, and the advertisements inundated everything I was, I began to create a list in my head of things I needed to be before I was lovable. The world asks, why love? Why should I love you, Nick? Why should I love you, Becky? Why should I love you, Kim? Why? It tells us, well, you know, John, if you have long, flowing hair, you'll find someone that'll love you. If you're 6'2 and an athlete, you'll find someone that'll love you. If you don't have acne and you're in seventh grade, someone will probably love you. If, if you have the right size car, the right job, the right title, if you have any one of these things the world tells us we need before we're lovable, then we'll love you. It's the why. Why should the world love you? Why should we care about our neighbor? And in response to that, God gives us a very clear answer. Why not? I have loved you since before you were born. I have loved you through every mistake. I will love you through every tomorrow. I have loved this creation since the very beginning, and my love will not let you go. You need to hear and feel that love before you can share it. And so we need to do a really good job, church, of being a living love for people as Jesus was a living love, sharing those moments and when we never doubted that that person loved us, whether it was a mom, a dad, a, an uncle, a mentor, a teacher, a coach. It could be a friend. We, we, we know what love feels like, Right? It's not that hard. We complicate it all the time. But when we know what love feels like and we share it through the gifts that God has given us together as the church in mission to this world giving good news, we are known as the disciples of Christ. Can you share it with us the next slide? This is the words that Jesus gives us. Right after the new commandment. Love each other as I have loved you, Jesus says, they will know you are my disciples by your love for one another. This love looks like many things. Do you know what they are? Because you know what impacts you and how you love. You can only love from your place of being loved. But what I want you to, to hear as, as you walk away today is that this type of love 
does not just happen in these chairs. It does not just happen through your gifts and your offering. It does not just happen through your, your assistance ministries. It does not happen through your singing. It does not happen just through your job. It happens in your interaction with other people. You cannot love someone you've never been in a relationship with. You cannot love something you're not willing to sit and listen to. You cannot love someone if you're not willing to walk side by side with them through the good and the bad or invite them to come along with you on a journey that you will know will make them belly laugh so hard that tears will stream down your face. Everything in life is better when it's shared. And the love that holds us together is why we must do it. I want to hear your story, Jack. I want to know your why, Colton. I need to hear your answer to the question of why. Why am I loved today? And I want to know what helped you feel that way. And I want to share with you that you have been loved. Not just by God, but by me. And I want to show you with my actions so I invite you to be a living love. As Methodists, we are called to have a method, a programmed order to do things. Make a plan. Pick someone. Pick anyone you know, a handful of people. Pick them and say, I'm going to intentionally spend more time with them. And I'm going to share love with them. I'm going to give a little bit more grace. I'm going to listen a little bit longer. Yes, Uncle Tom, you can tell me the story for the 17th time. Because I know it's important to you. Love is simple. But love is profound because it changes lives. So let us go forth today as a living love, helping our neighbor, serving, sharing the good news, visiting the imprisoned, but also not forgetting the simple everyday love that we can give to our neighbor, our family, our friends, and even the stranger. There was a very powerful quote I wanted to wrap everything up with. It's a quote from... Bishop Steve Charleston, about what that, might, that love might look like for you today. So I leave you with these words. Love all that you can today, as far as you can, as widely and wildly as you can, without boundaries or borders, giving out your love for all that you see in beauty and nature around you, loving unrestrained the simple life that lives forever around you, the flowers in the field, the sparrows darting by, the sky and the wind as surely as if they were your own, loving every passing person, not stopping to count the reasons. But loving as if your loving made the whole planet breathe. Love all that you can today. For in such love is the secret beginning of what will never end. What will never let us go. And so with that, know that you are a beloved child of God. Amen. We come now to a time of offering. And so I invite you as always to offer yourself in a relationship to God, but also I invite you to offer your gifts, your tithes, give back a portion of what you might have been blessed with by prayer, by presence, by tithe, by witness. And I ask our ushers to bring forward our morning offering.
Jesus did not say that it would be easy to bring the good news to all people. 
But the Bible does say that nothing can separate you from the love of God. So go now in peace, humbly walking with God, bringing the good news of hope to all the people. Amen.